Bumblebee is looking good. Good morning, Bumblebee. <laughs> Our breakfast room for the past few days. Look at this. It's so super cozy. I want something like this for the future to live in. <laughs> it is so cool to have breakfast in a yurt. This is amazing. They have really cute decoration here as well around. They have some traditional pictures and some traditional... I think those are horse reins. Whatever that is. <laughs> but anyway, the most important thing is to go get coffee. <laughs> Thank you. Yummy. I don't know if you can see the difference on Bumblebee. Just check it out. Let's go around it. Dun 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 dun. Dun 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 dun. <laughs> yeah, we have been really, really lucky because we got a message from. Ryan, he works for Moscow Moto and asked us, guys, can I kit you out with new panniers? And we were like, yes, please, because our old Endurostan panniers, they started actually to break. So it was the perfect time to exchange them. And now we have this amazing Moscow Motors panniers, but not just the panniers, we're having like nice cute backpacks as well. Yeah, we said to Ryan, uh, I see that you guys have also these cool backpacks with this like front thing <laughs> and this like tank bag. And he was just like, no worries. Like you guys could have the whole set with these like auxiliary pockets. They're called Oxpox. We've got like one on the front, one on the back. We've got like this like beaver tail pocket at the side where we can keep like they gave us actually four water bladders so we've got water bladders or hydration packs on both sides and one in each of our backpacks so we're carrying like how many liters have we got in total we have 10 liters that's insane that's insane yeah we figure at the moment out what's the best uh, system here because you know when you change from one system to the next it was a bit of a challenge yeah. hey but it's really cool because these panniers actually Actually, they just slip on and off because they have a plate that attaches to our givy rack. The previous panniers, we had to like clip them on and yes. like buckle them up and everything like this. Uh -huh. And it was a big challenge always to get them off and on. But these ones, you literally just pull a little tab on the side. Can't see it right now. Here, pull a little tab on the side, lift it up and the whole thing just comes straight off and then we can take it straight into the room. So it's super, super cool. Yeah, I'm really happy with the setup. I think we have a little bit more like fine tuning to do to get it all 100% sorted. At the moment, it's a little bit mishmash. We've got about eight packs of noodles. <laughs> I mean, we're heading out now in the wilderness of Mongolia. So <laughs> we have to be prepared. <laughs> but yeah, thanks, guys. That's an absolutely awesome setup we've got yeah. going on now. Even though we said we were in Mongolia, they were just like, no worries, we'll just ship it out. So we just went like uh, yesterday and went and collected it from the airport. And as soon as we opened the box, actually, to get the um, new panniers on, there was one guy, he saw us and he came like straight away. We're just installing our new panniers. We got a lot of help from locals here. They just sort of like saw that we were a little bit struggling. They got it not by themselves. I'm still watching the video, <laughs> trying to tell me how to do it. <laughs> We can't really communicate, but he just showed me his jacket as well and said like, I'm a rider as well, so I know how that works. Amazing. He knew everything, like he had so much. We asked him, do you want our old panniers? They have maybe one or two sections which aren't perfect, but otherwise they are perfectly fine to use. And he said, yes, yes. And then he came with us to the hostel and we could give him the um, our old panniers, which is awesome. Really, really nice guy to help us out with that. Yeah, perfect. Let's uh, try them out and let's hit the road, hey? Yeah, I think it's time to give these bad boys a test run. <sighs> Do you think there's actually enough space? Yep. Oh my God, that's tight. I think we have to get rid of some stuff from the backpacks, hey? All right, anyway. Let's start like this. Okay. And we'll see how we get on. Yep. Okay, let's hit the road. Okay. See you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.
I think because we've got so much water as well, yeah. I think that definitely we are carrying more weight, so I do have to be a bit more careful. Yeah. Good morning world, welcome back to our circumnavigation around the globe by motorcycle. We're here in the capital of Mongolia, Ulaanbaatar, and we spent the last few days here resting because we both got really sick actually. We spent the, yesterday pretty much the whole day mostly in bed. We did have to go to the airport to get this gear but mostly I've been just trying to rest as much as possible. Yeah we would have loved actually to <laughs> spend more time in this amazing hostel. It was so comfortable and clean and the owner was so friendly and he helped us out with planning like the next leg here in Mongolia. Plus breakfast in a yurt every morning in a gear. Yes. How cool is that? <laughs> Yeah, it was really cool, but unfortunately we couldn't stay any longer because we are still on a mission. Our Russian visa will expire in like two weeks from now on and we have still a long way to go. I say Russian visa because we have to exit Mongolia and enter Russia again to then uh, go into Kazakhstan. Yeah, because Mongolia and Kazakhstan, they don't actually touch each other. There's actually a small gap in between. You have to basically ride like a thousand miles into Russia to be able to get from the border to Mongolia to the border to Kazakhstan. So this is the reason that we are still like on the move because we don't know how the road conditions really are, we don't know how long it's gonna take us, so we have to make sure that we um, not overstay the Russian visa yeah. because we don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> Absolutely not. So we are planning to ride about five to seven days here in Mongolia and then we know the Russian section is actually not more than three days. That should get us into Kazakhstan before the visa expires, hey? Yes. Yeah, we're planning on doing about five hours riding per day for this leg. Um, so let me show you where we're heading today. So we are here in the capital of Mongolia and today we're going to be heading down this road and then taking a turn off here towards the town of Hahorin. Yeah, our first stop out of the modern day capital is actually where the ancient capital of the Mongol Empire used to be. And over there they've got some really beautiful landscapes and the oldest monastic center of Buddhism in Mongolia. So it's going to be a super cool place to visit. I'm really excited to get over there. Plus, if it's a good enough price, we're going to be staying in a ger for tonight. Yeah, I'm super excited to explore Mongolia. Today we have about 220 miles and Google Maps says it will take us five hours. <laughs> so better hit the road, let's go. So this city, Ulaanbaatar, the capital of Mongolia, was actually founded in 1639 as a nomadic monastic center for Buddhism. And the city's population today is 1.6 million people, which is half of the entire population of Mongolia. So it is really a crazy metropolis in the middle of an otherwise very, very empty land. So the name Ulaanbaatar was given in 1926 and it means red hero. And I believe that the red is in relation to the communist movement. Mongolia was uh, closely connected to the Soviet Union, but it became a democratic republic uh, after the fall of the Soviet Union in 1991. So being by far the most populous place in the country, it's also the financial and industrial center of Mongolia, and it's actually connected very well. It's connected to the Trans-Siberian Railway heading to Russia, but it's also connected to the Chinese rail network. So it's a really important transport hub for trade between China and Russia. It's also the coldest capital city in the world by mean average temperature throughout the year. Crazy, but today we have like 28 degrees and sunshine <laughs> and I'm actually boiling hot. <laughs> yeah, can you believe it? Boiling hot in the coldest capital city in the world. This traffic just is barely moving. It's like in most places, traffic at least like crawls along, but here it feels like traffic just gets completely blocked up. Yeah, it's crazy, man. Oh God, I think the first hour of this GPS 
route is just getting out the city. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. And because of this like thing on the side, this big like step, uh, I can't even overtake anything. I can hardly squeeze through the middle of the traffic or anything. I can't go around the traffic. I'm kind of just stuck. Yeah. Oh my oh. lord. He's going. Okay. Yeah, they do not have a good road system here. It's completely mental. Horses on the highway. <laughs> Only in Mongolia, hey? Only in Mongolia. Oh, look at this baby one there. Oh, hello. hello. Oh, that's so cute. I wouldn't say it's the best grazing for them here, but anyway. <laughs> no. We are finally getting out onto the open roads of Mongolia. Woohoo! It says we've been riding on the bike now for an hour and a half. So we have ridden 20 miles so far. <laughs> 200 miles to go. Yeah. But hopefully this will be a little bit quicker from now on. Starting to get a bit more spacious, starting to be able to breathe. Oh, here we go again. Come on, guys. Get off the road. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all the horses playing in the mud. Nice. Oh, that's cute. That's really cute. Apparently there are 70 million livestock in Mongolia. Yes, this is more like it. The wide open roads of Mongolia. Yeah, I'm really, really amazed about how much space they have here, you know? No houses at all. Yeah, it's crazy. Just a couple of valleys over from Ulaanbaatar and it's just absolutely no buildings at all anymore. It's just grassland and hills as far as the eye could see spectacular but the road is actually surprisingly bad or we have to adjust something with our suspension here maybe because we added on some new weight with our new panniers it's super bouncy i'm already scared if it's our suspension again you know i mean we're carrying like 10 liters of water now we never carried that much before so yeah True. i think we've got to harden the, the rear suspension a little bit but yeah the road is definitely pretty uneven pretty bouncy and bumpy yes so we just stopped here on the side of the road to have some lunch but then a biker passed and he turned around and check out that bike Rosario here from Italy. He's going all the way to Magadan, yeah. right? And you say you went through Afghanistan? Yeah. Afghanistan is very bad, but very good. Okay, bad but good. What's bad? It's difficult for the security. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, I can imagine. The Taliban with uh, the Kalashnikov. You, you see them? Yeah, yeah. Oh my but, God. Uh, but the people is very, very nice. Yeah? yeah? And the landscape is fantastic. Wow, wow. That's amazing. And I thought that we were crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but what is really funny, because we met actually his friend in Patagonia and we got a sticker from him. It's this sticker. And now we're meeting another part of the crew because look here. Yeah. Maurizio here is who we met in uh, Argentina and now Rosario from the same crew. How crazy is that? So now we just have to meet Franco. Then we complete the whole of the Kamchatka crew. Here we go, Lavi and Oli going on the bike of fame. Look at this. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's a nice place. Thank you. Wow. So cool. See you, Rosario. And he told us he is 61 and it's like wow big respect really that is keeping the adventurous spirit alive <laughs> this place is giving me real saharan desert vibes now just a lot of wind oh yes a lot of wind but it's really cool because somebody built this nice roadside shelter so it's a really nice place 
have some lunch. Welcome Mongolia! Woo! Woo! Yeah. Woo! This is just a crazy, crazy, massive landscape in front. Oh my God. Oh my God, wow. You can see the road just goes like dead straight all the way through until those mountains in the background. Yes, it looks like the road to nowhere. So now that we're out in the vast countryside of Mongolia, I think it's time to tell you guys a few facts about this very grassy country. So the size of Mongolia is 1.5 million square kilometers which with their population being only 3.3 million and half of the people living in Ulaanbaatar it actually makes this nation the most sparsely populated sovereign nation in the world the landscape is largely what you're seeing right here grassy steppe there are more mountains in the north and desert in the south but there's pretty much grassy steppe lands like this throughout most of the country. You've got to be super careful here. There are goats and sheep everywhere. Come on guys, off the road. Oh, I love it, it's so cool. It feels like the biggest zoo in the world. The territory, which is now Mongolia, has actually been ruled by various different nomadic empires over the years. The most notable, of course, being the Mongol Empire in 1206. And the Mongol Empire was actually the largest land empire in the world. And Mongolia was the very center of that empire. The town where we'll be staying tonight, Kahurin, was actually the capital of the Mongol Empire in the 1200s. So yeah, a really special country. What we have seen so far is just mind-blowing. have to be very careful here. Looks like that the whole mountain is moving. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. It's like a mixture of sheep and goats at a picnic. Yeah. <laughs> yes. How cute. <laughs> oh, I love them. I love them. <gasps> Hello guys! Hello! Oh the goats are so nice! Wow. But yeah you can see like it's quite dangerous as well! Wow! You see that eagle? Yeah! Cool! Beautiful! Yeah no one owns this land around here! This is just free land and anybody can just bring their herd here, set up their gear and just just be! Just roam around and let the animals roam free! Oh my god it's looking a bit dark ahead isn't it? Absolutely. Jesus. We still got 83 miles to go as well, so might get rained on before the end of the day. Guys, we just stopped on the side of the road because we could see our first herd of Bactrian camels. Look at those guys. They are massive. Wow. That's so cool. Really, really cool. Yeah, they are beautiful animals. So, of course, the main difference between Bactrian camels and dromedaries, which are what we saw when we were in Morocco. Look, there's some camels right in front. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. Nice. nice. Is the fact that these guys have two hubs and dromedaries just have one. I think these guys are also a bit hairier. So cool, it's like one minute you just see like cows and sheep and you're like, oh yeah, you know, we have this in Europe. But then, it's a herd of camels. Yeah. That's amazing. Incredible. So we decided to stop and put our rain clothes on because we're getting our first drops on the helmet and we can see probably less than a kilometer ahead that it's just rain, a sheet of rain waiting for us. We've still got about an hour and a half until we reach the town of Hachorin. But uh, yeah, it looks like, looks like we're gonna have to get our rain stuff on now.
Look at these little cuties! Look at them! Oh. And there are so many as well! Oh, so Oli doesn't feel very good. I'm a little bit worried. But we probably have to move on for another hour. Are you my warrior? No. We started this morning to take antibioticum. Hopefully you get better soon. Hello. <laughs> Hello. One hour more. Okay. Oh, it's such a nice scene, but I'm not feeling too good. I mean, under normal circumstances, we wouldn't have left Ulaanbaatar today. Mm -hmm. But it's just with this visa going to be running out in two weeks, to really just have to get to Kazakhstan. Yeah. If we don't make it to Kazakhstan before two weeks, then basically we can't continue the journey. So exactly. So we kind of have to do this bit. Five hours of riding is not the kind of thing I'd be wanting to normally do today. But it is really nice. This area, by the way, is called Hogohan. And it's just big sand dunes with mountains behind and step around. And it's a really spectacular location, really beautiful. But I think it's a good idea for us to try and get to this camp area where yeah. we can find a gear and have a good rest. We will get there. Oh, Upala. Are you stuck or is it okay? I'm stuck. Are you stuck? Yep. I'm stuck. We're gonna have to give, try and give me a push. Yeah, it's pretty sandy around here. Yep, yep, we're going, we're going. Yeah, we're going. Good job there's two of us. If that was me on my own, I would have just, just stayed there overnight. Let's go. Let's go. Anyway, Kogo hard, ladies and gentlemen, the place where the dudes beat the steps and the mountains. Here it is, the official entrance to Harhorin. That's what it says, Harhorin. I definitely need to lie down. We were recommended actually one gear camp by the receptionist at the Danitsa hostel where we've been staying in Ulaanbaatar. He says this is the place he normally sends his guests. Oh, look at this place up ahead. Yeah. This is where we leave the main road. So the place is called Mongshuri Ger Camp Guest House. And apparently it's just like 0.3 of a mile in this direction. Or in that. I think it's over there actually. Over that direction? Yeah. Otherwise we would pitch up the tent here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it looks like it's probably this one up ahead. Yeah. <gasps> Give the bike a good shake down. This is it. Monkshuri Camp. Nice. Hello, we uh, come from uh, Danista, Danista Nomads Hostel, Ulaanbaatar. Oh yeah, oh cool. So we put, just put the bike in front. Cool. Oh cool. Nice. Wow, let me take a look. 
Oh wow, look at that. Oh, thank you. Oh. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> this is very nice, very beautiful. I like it. Very beautiful. Cool. After where did you go? We head west. 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 Inside. Yeah, ah. west. Continue west uh -huh. towards Altai and Russia. Long way. <laughs> yes. We made it! Happy and alive! Or I made it! Happy and alive! <laughs> and Oli made it happy and half alive. Aww. I know I might be sick, but it's really cool that we're sleeping inside a gear tonight. It's literally the coziest place in the entire world. So Oli just started to take antibiotics? Yeah, apparently here in Mongolia you don't need to go to the doctor to get them. I just got them from the pharmacy. So hopefully in one week you will be like new, hey? Yes. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. So for now we will just have some dinner and then we will go to bed early because we have still a long way to ride until we can take a proper proper days off, eh? Mm. <laughs> but the ride was absolutely stunning today. We have seen a lot. Mongolia is really, really beautiful. And that's it from us today. We hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share the video with your friends and family, comment below, and we will see you next time. Look at that bike, electric bike. Bye-bye. <laughs> Wow!